So our last speaker today is Andrew Slack. And he is not going to disappoint. He's the former Nathan Cummings Foundation Fellow, Civic Imagination Fellow at Civic Hall. He's the creator of the Harry Potter Alliance, which is a worldwide organization changing the world by making activism accessible through the power of story. I'm excited to have him here. Andrew. <laughs> Hello. Good, nice response. Where did my slide thing go? There it is, good. I need to see what I'm saying. Hi, my name is Andrew Slack. What's your name? I didn't catch that. Anyway, I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to be looking at your, your faces and I want to tell you a story about a movement. A movement to imagine better. Now, Today, that story uh, is going to begin, and we're going to close off with, uh, with Santa Claus. Uh, now, I happen, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> uh, growing up in the US, Santa is a big deal, and I grew up believing in Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm the little one. I'm so cute. This, this is where you're supposed to go like, Thank you. So Santa for me was a time of magic, a time of mystery, a time of what's going on in the North Pole? What's going on in his house? How the heck does he get to so many houses at once? It's amazing. Is he a ninja? Um, and it was, childhood for me was a truly magical experience. Flash forward 20 years. 23, out of college, ah! There was my parents' messy divorce. There was my insecurity around dating. There was, my, there was loved ones who were addicted uh, to substance abuses and the opioid epidemic and loan payments I couldn't afford and trying to figure out what my meaning was. And it was feeling like the magic of that childhood Santa universe was getting sucked out. And then Harry Potter came to my doorstep. Who here has read Harry Potter? OK, cool. Cool. Now, for those who did not raise your hands, just so you know, Harry Potter happens to be a very popular book series. <laughs> uh, and I did not want to read the books, but the kids I was working with encouraged me to read them. And when I opened that book, it, it opened up that world of magic and mystery from childhood. It opened up that sense of imagination, that sense of play. And Harry's world of Hogwarts opened up a world of, of childlike wonder for me, a world that Everywhere I went from that point on, I was excited to read Harry Potter. Lines at the post office suddenly became exciting because I could read Harry Potter. I finally had a girlfriend, and I was excited when she would fall asleep because I could read Harry Potter. <laughs> this was my life. I was just walking around telling people, have you, have you read the good book? <laughs> have you heard the good news? It's Harry Potter. Um, and I'm running around just talking about Harry Potter. And then when I delved into the fan community, I could not believe how creative it was with music and Quidditch and podcasts and conferences and on and on and on. And then I grew a little frustrated. Because if Harry Potter were in our world, he would do more than simply talk about how awesome it is to be Harry Potter. He would fight for justice in our world the way he fought for justice in his. He starts a student activist group called Dumbledore Army. Dumbledore's Army, yeah. And so I thought, what if we created the Harry Potter Alliance and we made it a Dumbledore's army for our world? Essentially became a community organizer in the Harry Potter fan community. And slowly but surely, fans caught on. And they loved this idea. Flash forward 12 years, and the Harry Potter Alliance, without my leadership anymore, is being led by so many incredible leaders, including close to 300 chapters in 30 countries approximately in six continents. We've sent five cargo planes to Haiti. We've built libraries across the world. We've gotten Warner Brothers to make all Harry Potter chocolate fair trade or us certified. We've gotten JK Rowling to praise us in Time Magazine. What? We've gotten amazing. It's, it's been an extraordinary and magical adventure. Um, to, say, to say the least. We've worked on LGBTQ issues, on issues about undocumented Americans, AKA muggle-born Americans, and because in, in helping people come out, because if Harry Potter has taught us anything, it's that no one should have to live in a closet or a cupboard in Harry's. 
Okay, specifically. Um, and then in, uh, in 2008, J.K. Rowling gave this incredible commencement speech at, uh, at Harvard. And she said um, that we do not need magic to transform the world. We carry all the power we need inside of us already. We have the power to imagine we have the power to imagine better. And this inspired me to feel like, you know what? People keep being like, you're the Harry Potter guy. I'm like, that's not enough. We got to do more. Because the reality is, is that when I put down that last book, I was so freaking sad to say goodbye to that world. I opened it up again. But <laughs> Hogwarts begins when you leave. And ultimately, all stories, all fantasy, Fantasy is not an escape from our world. It's an invitation to go deeper into it. So can we level this up? And so thus, the Imagine Better movement was born. And with partnership with the Harry Potter Alliance and me captaining Imagine Better, I'm going to make a plug right now. Because Imagine Better has been so behind the scenes. And now I'm like coming out and being like, join Imagine Better. So go to imaginebetter.org. Right now, it's just a Facebook group. Join it, please. Because we need you, and we're going to imagine better communities. We've scaled things up with popular culture. Um, with Superman is an immigrant. I don't know if you realize this, but Superman is an immigrant. He's also a refugee. He comes to this country without papers in the dead of night. And our country could not be a superpower without the superpowers of our newcomers. We did a campaign. We have the Hamilton Alliance. Because, you know, that bastard orphan, son of a whore, is an immigrant. I could do the whole album. I'm going to skip that right now. <laughs> He's an immigrant. Because immigrants, we get. You guys have to wake up. Immigrants, we. Good. And most of us are from immigration stories. So many of us are. We did a campaign around Hunger Games and economic equality. Can I get a. I, I, someone made the Mockingjay symbol. Yes, we did this. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was involved. We Fight for 15 was involved. This was Walmart Watch was involved. We then I tackled. We tackled the Star Wars fan community. Star Wars is a big deal. Don't know if you heard of it, but it's big. Star Wars Day is May the 4th. For May the 4th be with you. We just worked with the Star Wars fan community to redefine what it is because you can't learn the Force without a good teacher. So on May the 4th every year from now on, which happens to take place during National. Teacher Appreciation Week. People are writing about teachers that they appreciate in their lives. They're advocating for public schools and they're putting the hashtag teach me you did because in Yoda speak, mm, teach me you did. Uh, we, we held this really awesome event at Housing Works and that's me, but this is also the creator of The Daily Show, Liz Winstead. That's Barry Tunity Thurston up there. There was a group called Urban Word. They were incredible. And there's been some amazing things that have been going on. Uh, who was at the Women's March? Yeah, it was amazing on so many levels. And these are just some pictures of the use of popular culture on these signs. They were like incredible. Harry Potter, Kimmy Schmidt. Like the, 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 it was coming out of the woodwork. It was incredible. And it made me think, man, I've been to Comic-Con a lot because I'm a professional nerd. <laughs> but we need to go further than that. We need a Comic-Con for social change. We need to get Hollywood and writers and actors, all those folks, and advocates, but then also the fans, we who love these stories, all together in one room and say, these are the heroes we've been dreaming of becoming. And if there's ever been a time for a community of heroes, a Dumbledore's army, an Order of the Phoenix, a Fellowship of the Ring, a Rebel Alliance, a Resistance, the Resistance, it is now. And that was incredibly exciting. And then, I was looking at all of these marches, and they kind of all go together. The Tax March, um, the People's Climate March, the March for Science, May Day. Giving Tuesday is reinventing what holidays can be, and we convened them. Imagine better, can, we're the first conveners of all of these different organizers from these marches to say, how can we do this better next year? How do we deepen this? This can't just be constant anxiety, because it kind of is, right? Like It's like, oh my god, what did he say now? I don't know who he is. I, I'm not saying. Uh, but, uh, but it can't just be running from thing to thing to thing. We need to build an infrastructure, and we need to reinvent our holidays, and we need to do it with our stories. So can we be a rising tide lifting all boats? And as our rising tide is lifting all boats, so our sea levels are going up. And 
my beautiful hero from my childhood, Santa Claus, who has the biggest fandom in the world, bigger than Harry Potter, is about to lose his home in the North Pole. And we need to get kids and parents and families to become one family and say, we are going to save Santa's home. So I want to invite you to think about a few things. Number one, when there is a piece of popular culture that's out there, like I haven't seen Wonder Woman yet, but I hear it's super feminist and it's super awesome and it provides a different way of looking at the world. If you don't work with that, or if we as a, as a group of people don't use those stories, I call it cultural acupuncture. If we don't do that, then we're giving up like a $1 billion pro bono donation. Let's not be in the habit of doing that. Let's work with these stories that we love. So I want you to do that. So I'm not just recruiting you for my Imagine Better. I'm recruiting you to go out and think about how everything in popular culture is an opportunity to make social change more popular on the internet and offline. And we can do that with Imagine Better. I'd love for you to join us with Save Santa's Home. Imagine the possibilities. A Christmas special about kids saving Santa's home, a coloring book, a recipe book for Christmas eco-friendly gifts, a march on Macy's for a miracle on 34th Street. Like, this is like endless. Imagine the claymation Christmas special, the, the, the children's book. We need your help. Are you guys ready to save Santa's home? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, obviously. Um, this is some pictures of things. A polar bear, he's not so happy at the moment. That's Miracle on 34th Street. We have the reindeer and the sleigh. And when we have, this is a, a picture from Spain where all these people are in a marathon. They're dressed up as Santa. Imagine the energy we can tap into. We dream at night, but our books, TV shows, our movies, the things we believe in are our culture dreaming. And it's time to go into those dreams, ride those dreams, become the things that we believe in. So I'm going to ask you again to sign up for this community, imaginebetter.org. SaveSanta.us. Check out the Hamilton Alliance, because that's the room where it happens. Check out the Harry Potter Alliance. And check out your own self and the things that you care about, because there was no chance that I was going to be able to start the Harry Potter Alliance. It was not normal. It was perfectly not normal. Thank you very much. And we have an opportunity to be perfectly normal. Thank you very much. We have an opportunity to change the world. So here's imaginebetter.org. You can reach me at andrew at imaginebetter.org. You can follow us at imaginebetter. Oh, that Twitter, I, I'm so disappointed in the social media. So if anybody wants to help, tell me, because we got to do some stuff there. I have so much to talk about, guys. But I just am so grateful for your presence. Sometimes it's darkest before the dawn, and it sure is dark. But as the former speaker said, it is far better to light even the smallest candle than to curse the darkness. And boy, are we lighting candles. Whatever the state of our politics in, it may have shaken us to our core. But thank goodness, we have a beautiful core. It's a phoenix core. And it will. <laughs> and out of the ashes comes new life. Out of the ashes comes a new world. Out of the ashes comes imagining better. Your story is connected to my story. It's connected to the whole human story. And we have a chance to change that story for the better, to imagine better. We get to choose the next adventure. Thank you. All right. All right, then. We've got some questions. OK. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive in. So how do you avoid duplicating good work already happening in the spaces of, by other organizations? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, OK, that's, so that's a question that's going to require too much time. So if the person who asked, me, who asked that, please. There were 12 votes. OK, OK. <laughs> so duplication is a very messy subject. Because on the one hand, you don't want to duplicate and reinvent the wheel. You also don't want to get into territorialism. But at the same time, the same message being heard again and again and again, it, it, that helps. So have, find the people that are doing this work and find out what they need and, and work on it. When it comes to popular culture, we're kind of promoting it and creating more enthusiasm. So that's not really duplication, unless there's like three fan activist groups, in which case we need to create a fan activist network or fan, which is what we're building with Imagine Better. That's the best answer I can give them, the short answer. How do you deal with copyright? Um, I don't know how you deal with copyright. <laughs> um, I, I don't. <laughs> no. uh, we, we're protected uh, much more so than people think. You, know, uh, you can own intellectual property, but you can't own the intellect. 
Nothing we're doing is new. This is, this is how storytelling has always been done. And we are protected by parity law and fair use law. We don't claim to represent the authors or the companies. But we have negotiated with Warner Brothers, and it turns out I think they like me. I don't know how really? that happened. Yeah, Lionsgate didn't at first. They actually sent a cease and desist letter on the first night that Lionsgate, uh, that Hunger Games came out. So I sent it to the press, and um, can I curse? Sure. Um, Judd Apatow tweeted, doesn't Lionsgate have enough fucking money? And like, it got all of this, uh, the, the, this press, and people were praising fan activism. They never heard of fan activism. And Lionsgate was like, oh, it's the 21st century. And these people can market for us. And so I talked to them, and they're like, we're sorry. And I'm like, yeah, I am too. You should have done better, but you made a great movie. Let's work together in the future. Well, so how do you respond to the criticism that activism is becoming commercialized? Uh, I feel that that's, what does that mean, activism is becoming commercialized? Popular. Well, that's commercialized a, with companies and like Lionsgate and others who might Oh, oh people co-opting ca capitalism. I'd say try to look, Activism. OK. Right, so people co-opting activism. Correct. What did I say? Capitalism. Capitalism. People co-opting. Well, we should co-opt capitalism. That's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we're doing. If 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 activism is being co-opted, that's a sign. It's an indicator that we're, what we're doing is working. It also means we co-opt the co-opters. Go with it. Let's work with them. But then also, on the one hand, work with them with the with the handshake. On the other hand, remember, they're not necessarily our friends, but they might be, and maybe we can open their hearts. So. We can't sit out on this. We can't just say, oh, this is a bunch of the man taking us over. Like, we've got to interact with everybody. What are the three things we can do right now to make a difference? Um, like, how do you define making a difference? If I went to the bathroom, I'd make a difference. Um, that's definitely something <laughs> everyone should do. I think one thing you need to remember right now is the three Ps. I call them the three Ps for success, which is uh, um, uh, pat patience, persistence, and pizzazz. And oftentimes, people with a lot of patience lack pizzazz, and people with a lot of pizzazz lack a lot, lack a lot of patience. It's really important that we engulf all of those in our personal lives. And the second thing is care about your personal life. Care about your intimate relationships, because from there, you're going to learn more than anything. At the same time, we really need to build a, a higher sociological literacy and interact with, uh, with organizations that are doing good work. If you are white, find out how you can be an ally. There, we, we already know what the organizations are to work with. And so those are three things right off the bat. Uh, I would join Indivisible, because that's a great example of localized organization that's connected to centralized organization. You and have... join some of the crap I said. It's not crap, it's awesome. <laughs> I will say that you've got some fans out there because they want to, this is actually the top question, which is, can we give you a collective hug? <laughs> so, maybe after this. Um, That's so nice. So sweet. Sometimes, this audience is like. Yeah, you guys are awesome. I mean, the reality is, is the hug doesn't have to be like. The everyone. Universe, yeah. But it can be, I think we need to give each other hugs. Uh, and I think that we all need to do that. I mean, just, I'm up here confident. I was like having a near like panic attack backstage. And, and we're he all. He was. I, I was like, I was, I like, was like, just go out there and I do this. I was like, this. am I going to throw fine. up? There's like 20,000 people on the live stream. <laughs> but it, I think we do need to like give each other hugs and also appreciate failure and also appreciate that, look, if you make a mistake, that's okay. Like, the, the, Shit can be turned into fertilizer. So whatever happens in your life, <laughs> always that's the most important thing we need to do. That will be the most tweeted thing right after this. <laughs> Shit can be turned to fertilizer. So whatever the political environment is, whatever the culture one is, whatever your personal one is, our job as wizards and witches and magicians is to see the shit and say, this is an opportunity to turn it into fertilizer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.